Madden Football brings you the divisional round of the NFL playoffs and is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Saints and the Vikings, and it comes your way next. It seems like only yesterday we were here for Super Bowl 52 and now back for the road to the Super Bowl here in the Twin Cities at U.S. Bank Stadium. Coming up, we've got an ultra-important divisional round matchup in the NFC as it'll be the New Orleans Saints taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Hello, everyone. As the postseason continues here on EA Sports, we're pleased to bring it to you. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And who has the edge here? You got one side that had some extra rest, but another comes in off a win last week in the wild card round. And it's funny, depending on which team you are, you say that that's an advantage. You'll take the rest. You'll take the week off. Get your guys healed up a little to four berths in the conference championships on the line here as divisional weekend in the NFL is underway. From his end zone, here's Rashid Shaheed. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State. Derek Carr. It wasn't really his best performance of the year in the wild card round last week. He just had the one touchdown pass, but he got the job done and his team advanced. For them to continue on to the championship round, though, now he's going to need to take a few more chances with the ball downfield, push it a little bit more, and make sure his team finds its way into the end zone a few more times. So second and four from the 22. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. That's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. Running right through him. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. So here come the Vikings as they get set for their first drive. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. He got the win last week, and we all know how infrequently rookie quarterbacks win in the playoffs. So by now, it feels like old hat to him. Well, maybe not old hat, but you've got to believe he'll be looser, calmer going into this one. He already knows what it takes to lead a team to victory in the playoffs. And throwing here to start to drive as they connect left side. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. 67 yards, and the Vikings are on the board first here in this division round matchup. Well, we knew they had the crowd on their side. Their defense has already made a stop, and now here's an opening drive touchdown. Yeah, how about the defense making the stop, offense feeling their momentum that they've generated, and turning it into points on their side. So now you've got a team working together, and they got the crowd involved fully on their side in this ballgame. And in this playoff atmosphere, that 12th man means even more. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out of a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves shot that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. 
And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Another first down there as this one goes for 25. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10. Down at the 31. Shotgun now for Carr. Again, it's Johnson. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. Into the red zone. It's Carr. He gets it left side to Johnson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And it'll be second down. They get this to Smith on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one, and they need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Here's Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Saints are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. Camara. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Throwing now is Carr. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Carr now third and goal and this is going to be incomplete this Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play great defense there on third and goal they took away everything forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it the kick by Lutz is good and they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And CD, you know, sometimes you don't need those complicated game plans or the added wrinkles. I mean, last time, how you think about it, couldn't have been any simpler. One play, one pass, touchdown. I know those coaches put a lot of work into this game plan, but I don't think they mind possessions like that at all. They just saved those calls for this possession instead. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35 yard line. A gain of 37. I don't think anyone would argue that having that extra week definitely helps come playoff time. And those were some fresh legs right there. That extra practice time and planning, certainly in evidence. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Back to throw again. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Quick 
Kidder here, it's complete. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Moss, and he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They'll look to throw again. Touchdown! A great effort there with his second touchdown of this opening quarter. And the Vikings are able to add on to that lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Extra point splits the uprights, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings move it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The New Orleans offense set to take over. They trail early on the road in the playoffs. Not a great combination as they've got it first and 10. And they'll get this one underneath to Camaro. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Motion left, Smith. And they'll fake the jet sweep there and instead hand to Camaro. And yet again, he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Great job by this Vikings defense. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right to the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stump that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. Car going to throw. That is caught. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Throwing on first down is Carr. Finding Taysom Hill complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. No catches for him in the wild card win last week, but he's got a first quarter grab here from Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now Carr. Alave over the middle. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and a yard. This is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 24 yard line. 15 yards there on the catch and run. With these run pass options, we often talk about a good quarterback and running back. Well, having a talented wide receiver helps also. Yeah, even coming in third in the discussion, sometimes that means he really should be first because all you want to do is get the ball in their hands and let them make the big plays downfield. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Here's Carr to throw. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. So the completion good for six yards, and it makes it third down and two yards to go. Now Carr. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. To throw, it's Carr. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Kamara up the middle. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. 
passing game has been working quite well so far, but the running game has been a little bit of a struggle. That's a surprise to me. Typically, when you can throw it, you've opened up lanes for your runners. Throwing his car on third down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So Carr will exit stage right and on his lets for the Saints field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Lutz is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. He might be being set up here for a busy ball game already. Two kicks here in the first quarter, and he's knocked both through the posts. And for now, you know they'll be happy getting those three points. But what they really want is to find a way for him to kick extra points instead of field goals. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. But this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because, remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overcomp. And got his man complete! Talk about rookies having big statistical years. He had a boatload of these in the regular season, more than one per game, and now he has his first here in the playoffs. And it shows off his big playability, too, because we saw this quite a bit in college, and it certainly continued here at the next level. Another explosive play for a guy who's made them all season long. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is up to 15 now. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And not a good return here at all as they'll be forced to start at the 12-yard line. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. They trail here. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Booked by Antoine Winfield, Jr. And he'll be brought down at the 7-yard line. They had him back deep, got the interception, and now they start inside the 10. Parker forgets starting inside the red zone. They're inside the green zone. From the 10-yard line in, a lot of teams call it that because that's the money zone. Get it into the end zone and make your cash. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. He'll drop to throw. Completes it to the fullback hand. And he is going to lose yardage here. We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. As they've got it as we resume action. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They'll look to throw on third and goal. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. Kick here is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, Charles, I think you'd have to call that a win for the defense after the turnover already in field goal range, and they had to settle for three. Yeah, being the beautiful part is you start so close to the end zone that your thought process on offense has to loosen up a little bit because you're thinking to yourself, you're almost guaranteed three. Let's take some good shots at the end zone and try and turn it into six. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. 
and you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The offense on third down, they've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. But forget the run on third and one. They shock the D and rip off a pretty big play. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And they went the wrong way there, losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Play action. Now it's Carr. Finds his man. That's Alave on the crossing route. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A third field goal in the first half. Not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. To throw his car. This one could play to his fullback out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. Carr. And he's going to go down here a sack. They push him back to the 34. Micah Parsons. The outside linebacker dropping him for a loss of six. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Here's Carr. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Carr now to throw. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure, and it's a loss of six. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But I also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. And for the Saints here on third down, an extra defensive back on the field. They'll set up to throw. And to find the open man, that's complete. And it was a stiff arm there that freed him enough to get the first before he's tackled. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Well, Charles, you look at this offense, they're the number one seed, a Super Bowl favorite, but it's hard to avoid the topic that this is a rookie quarterback under center making his first ever postseason appearance. Any concern level there? I would think that we all have some concern because, you know, a rookie quarterback, that's just not normal, right? But I think I'd be a lot more concerned if they were the six or seven seed and had to go on the road and play in a hostile environment. What if it was cold outside? But here you've got a guy who's been solid all year, led them to all those wins, number one seed. I think they have unquestioned belief in him. They also feel like they have a responsibility to help carry him along as well. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shot of the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards 
between those last two plays. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice game, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And when you get into the divisional round of the playoffs, this is where having the ability to run the football is such an advantage. The defenses, they're generally going to be tougher the further you go along. So if you can get something established up front, it's going to give you a great chance to move on. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Now a second and ten. They'll set up a throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Looking to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now it'll be fourth and short. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I love those plays. Fourth and one. That's who wants it more this time the offense. Yeah, there's a lot of hooting and hollering in there, right? A lot of contact and a lot of collisions as they try and find some space. Who's going to drop their hips? Game left. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Vikings continue to show why it pays to play at home in the postseason as they add on to their lead. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. The Saints coming out now to take the field. One semi-factor, if you want to call it that, that was brought up in the papers this morning here, Charles. You got a dome team on the road in a cold weather environment first round of the playoffs in January. Do you think that's a big deal? Ordinarily, I say no. But in this situation, because you're used to that perfectly controlled environment, some coaches will want their teams exposed to it. And if you're coming from a warm weather place and, you know, even getting outside of your dome doesn't really help you, a lot of times they'll go on the road a little bit earlier. Go to a cold weather place, go to a place where there's a little bit of weather and practice there that week before the game to try and simulate the conditions they expect come game day. Carr going to try and throw on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now a play fake. Carr. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball. But he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. But he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. These sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, They've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. The Saints on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and forever. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Blake Gillikin on the punt now on fourth down. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. Take it in at the 22. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, 
you've really done some damage in an NFL game. Here's a diving catch right side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Second quarter action, two minutes to go on divisional round weekend. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to find Jefferson open downfield. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Another big play as they get 28 out of that one. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. They'll look to throw again. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A great play there. Saving his best for the playoffs with his third touchdown of the game. And the Vikings are able to add on to their first half lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. The Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. Well, things for them, just to put it bluntly, man, it has been tough sledding here in the first half, facing that big deficit. The clock is dwindling now. Maybe if they can get something on the board here before intermission, they'll have at least a little momentum heading into the second half. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Carr. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Meanwhile, Carr's throw taken in by Edwards. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Now Carr, it's Edwards again. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout, and with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Throw complete there to Thomas. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. The kick by Lutz is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. This the first of four Divisional Round matchups coming up this weekend. We'll get back out to you guys in just a moment. But first, let's take a look ahead to tomorrow's other Divisional Round game in the NFC. And it looks like we've got a good one in store, as it'll be the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Atlanta Falcons. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. A trip to the NFC title game hanging in the balance. Second half action back underway. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And they're in the position they expected to be in. They've got the lead, home crowd behind them, and they're looking toward making that next step in these playoffs. And I think a key for them is to put together some good, long, extended drives. Work the run in a little more with that big offensive line. I'm not saying get away from throwing the football. That's still working. But if they run it more effectively, they may get even bigger plays in the passing game. They go play action here on first down. 
Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Now back to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Whatever the discussions were at halftime and trying to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's Demario Davis navigating his way into the backfield for a tackle for loss. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. They'll look to throw here. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They'll drop to throw. And it's intercepted. William Jackson with a pick. And the Saints are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Now Carr throwing on second down, and that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Carr going to throw. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. They'll look to throw. That's into the hands of Edwards. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured, shaken up on that last play. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now a third and six. Now Carr. That is caught, and he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Now Carr. He gets it complete to A.T. Perry. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 34-yard line. A give to Camaro running right. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Second and ten. To throw its car. Now he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. 
Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the... And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And that'll put us within three scores as it becomes now a 23-point game. Well, whatever was said in the locker room during the break must have worked. They forced the turnover. They didn't get the touchdown, Charles, but it does translate into three points to begin this second half. Exactly as they discussed in the locker room at halftime, get some points to get things kick-started. Now start your half off with some momentum. Gives you something to build on for your next possession. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know, they're going to run, try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. Back to throw again. Complete. Jefferson the target. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 25-yard line. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Again, he'll drop to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 14. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is excellent. You get five. That's a whale of a game. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. They'll try to run this one in. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise. And he Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are an extra point away from going up by 30. Selma, man, another touchdown. They're looking like the number one seed that they've earned throughout the year. Looking pretty dominant right now. We knew the road to the Super Bowl would run right through this stadium. Somebody's going to have to come in here and beat these guys. Good luck. I don't think it's happening this weekend. No, definitely not this weekend. And for anyone else out there, bring your game. Buyer, beware. 
Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. But we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Throwing his car on third down. And that is incomplete. Might get to give out a little bit of pause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Fielded just inside the 30. It's a 43-yard punt, a return of five. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, and that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are pouring it on. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You could see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is, when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but... I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But, Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. From the gun, it's Carr. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Man, the they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first to 10 as they take over. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to sling this deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. Touchdown. A big play there. 59. And the Vikings get another third-quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. 
point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. The New Orleans offense set to take over. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. On second down, Kamara fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. Well, you're just looking at the scoreboard and where we're at in the third quarter. I don't know that it's going to matter much at this point, CD, but these small runs on the ground, they're not going to get it done. No, they're not. And right now, the guys stopping the run have been superior in this ball game, giving them no openings, no seams, and now they get this game well in hand. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. That's pulled in at the 32. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Vikings head out to take over once again. Charles, this offense, they've been on a roll. Two drives ago, they scored. Remember, last drive was that one play touchdown strike, so now they're looking to make it three for three. You know, I talked to a Hall of Famer one time about, hey, when you're on defense and these types of things are happening to you, what goes through your mind? And he told me at that point, it's not about schemes. It's not about what's called from the sideline. It's about players. Who's going to make a play, make a stand, and stop this offense from doing what they've been doing? Here's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. This big game continues. Ten catches now and another first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. On first down, he'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. One quarter remains for a trip to the NFC title game. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. This second and four. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Four yards the pickup, first down. Hands it off out of the gun. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. And the ball on the 30. Here's second and four. Back to throw. And this is incomplete. Well, at this juncture, CD, you normally see teams pack in the passing game. They've got the huge lead. Not them, though. They're still taking their shots. I remember reading in past history, there was a college football coach in the Hall of Fame. His nickname was Close the Gates of Mercy. Well, he wasn't really big on that. He was big on going ahead and scoring. He's kind of reincarnated right here. We're watching it in front of us. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and off the play action, he'll look to throw it. That is incomplete. Partner in the sportsmanship handbook, there's something to be said for calling the dogs off in a blowout. But these defenders, they also know this is the NFL, and it's their job to stop them, whether they're in the game or they're down by a handful of touchdowns. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. The Vikings on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and eight. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. 
And he had to get this down to the 15. He won't make it. He's a yard or two short. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. He'll drop to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. And they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And this 11-play drive is going to lead to nothing on the scoreboard. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule. That if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. Only able to gain a couple there. And yeah, that will bring up second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight. Here's Carr to throw. Back to Kamara for another catch. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Here is third down and four. Throwing now is Carr. To the sideline and incomplete. You know, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And this one not officially in the bag, but it's looking more and more like you and I are going to be in these same seats next week for a game to go to the Super Bowl. And it's contrary to our meeting with the, with the visitors, wasn't it? Remember when we went over to their hotel before the game, and one of the themes they kept hitting us with was, Let's put the pressure on the number one seed and see if they can handle it. Let's, let's do that. Well, they're the number one seed for a reason. Best team all year long. They're showing it again in this game. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And this will be a Vikings first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Brings up second and 12 at the 40-yard line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. It'll go as a gain of four. And third and eight now. Brings up third and eight. Back to throw here. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. And here's Ryan right now. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. Their hopes of advancing past this divisional round hanging by a threat, if that, as they begin here with a first and ten on the wrong side of the scoreboard. Carr going to throw. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. As this one moves towards its conclusion, another incomplete pass there. Thoughts on the secondary? I mean, <laughs> seem to be pretty effective in this one. Yeah, I thought that they've been absolutely outstanding. I mean, their job is to prevent touchdowns, and not a single touchdown is going on the board against them. Of course, they want to make it a total shutout, but hey, if you don't give up touchdowns, you got a heck of a chance to win. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Pardon my vocabulary isn't that great, but to me, there's only one word that fits this front seven today, and that's dominant. 
Four and five sacks is already rare in one game. Getting to more than six in one contest while winning by this many points, an absolutely astounding effort by every player involved. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And it would appear that that first-round bye certainly helped. They've looked fresh from the start and no letdown here as they lead big in this divisional round and they look to book a spot in the conference championship. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Here's third and six. Looking to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And I don't think he got there, no. Gee, short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. And here's Ryan right now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. First down, Saints. Carr now on first down. Thomas has got it, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. From the 46, here's second down and seven. Now Carr again. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Perry. It'll be a gain of five. And now that sets up third and two. To throw its car. And this is going to be incomplete. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down. And he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. And they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, those three points likely not going to matter much, but I guess they get a little closer, a little more respectability. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been outplayed all game long, but like my mom used to tell me all the time before I went out, dress up a little bit, son. Make yourself respectable. <laughs> and that's what they're doing here. They're just dressing up the final score. And out now come the Vikings. They have all but booked their ticket to the NFC Championship game next weekend, and they'll look to finish things off here now in this fourth quarter. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks, and when you don't, that's the result you end up with. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. 
He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Now the Saints coming back out, ready to go for this next drive. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Now second and nine. There they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Now during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. And they come through with three after forcing the turnover on the CD second half. You're starting inside the red zone. Obviously, they would have liked six out of that. Absolutely, because that's all you're thinking is how do you get it into the end zone? You want the field goal to be the last resort? In this case, they gave it a great try, but did have to settle for three. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. Now they knew this would be tough on the road, divisional round, and that has certainly been the case with the deficit they face in this fourth quarter. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He completes it to Alame. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Play action. Now it's Carr. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. They'll look to throw here. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, but after this one's done, you just feel like in the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Here's Carr. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. instead of throwing the interception. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. Now a quick throw into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be taken down here, and that is how this one's going to come to an end. The Vikings will continue on in these playoffs as we say so long, everybody. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports.
It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.